This video was brought to you by manscaped.com. Now this might be one of the most out there products I ever had sponsored this channel, but just as it's important to take care of my head, down below can be just as important. Yes, I'm referring to manscaping, and no, there won't be a live demonstration this time, so don't worry. When it comes to taking care of yourself down there, well, there's no better option than manscaped.com, the only men's brand dedicated to below the waist grooming and hygiene, complete with tools designed by aerospace engineers to make the whole process easy, even for beginners. You can visit their website using the link in the description below and get started with one of their dedicated sets like the Perfect Package 2.0 that comes complete with the Lawnmower 2.0, a waterproof manscaping trimmer with a powerful 6,000 RPM motor with skin safe technology that prevents nicks and snags. And there's also the Plow. If you're looking to go bare, to be perfectly blunt there, the Plow is your number one single blade safety razor to do the job. But don't worry, there's still instructions to use it properly so you don't accidentally make a mess. These even act as disposable shaving mats. Manscaped.com has got your back. You can even get some nifty t-shirts and boxers to help the boys breathe. And when you're all done, you got the Crop Preserver, a 24-hour moisturizing deodorant for below the waist. Hey, you use deodorant for your armpits, right? It makes sense. Your bush is just as important. And how often can you really say, now where did I put my anti-chafing ball deodorant? And lastly, there's the Crop Reviver, an all-natural body spray and refresher perfect for your gym bag, car console, or your nightstand. If you subscribe now, you get the Shed Travel Bag as a free gift, which I love for the texture alone, really. Get 20% off your order along with free shipping using the code SCA. MJ at manscaped.com. Hey everybody, before we get started today, I really want to you know, take a bit of time to thank you guys for your continued support throughout the last couple of months, especially throughout the last couple of months where ad revenue can shrink on a whim through no fault of your own, and it is frustrating when that happens. Uh, some of you may have noticed an influx of sponsored ads throughout the last couple of videos, which I'm always a little hesitant about because I know some of you might view them as intrusive and what have you, but uh, they really do support the channel. Uh, whether you, you follow through with the, the promotional links or what have you, just having them on the video itself helps the channel uh, tremendously. And uh, it's because of those and your guys continued support that I'm able to get offers like that. And it really means the world to me that I have those opportunities and that you guys will continue to support the channel uh, through, through thick and thin. Uh, and, and as a result, I'm able to you know, pay my bills and able to you know, live a normal life, you could say, and I'm able to take care of my little furry baby upstairs, Celine, getting her fixed and all that sort of thing. That's, uh, that's a wonderful adventure that I'd rather not go into detail in right now. So as I'll say time and time again, thank you so much for your love and generosity and I'm hoping this channel will continue to go places as long as you folks are willing to keep watching. But uh, anyway, this is my 200th versus video. Hooray, yay, fireworks all over the place. It's yeah, this is, no shit, this is my 200th versus video. I'm not counting the Sonic hacking contest videos or uh, the Johnny versus Say stuff. I'm talking 200 full-fledged versus videos. 200, that's, that's, I didn't think it'd be Pokemon related. I'm never really good at planning uh, milestones or what have you, so we're just kind of gonna go with the flow here. Nearly two years after the release of Colosseum, we got Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness for the GameCube, and I'm sure I'm not alone in this, but every time I see the letters XD next to each other, I'm thinking someone's laughing at something. Wait, what, is this, is this some sort of fucking joke to you? But this is mid-2005, the Nintendo DS was already out, but Generation 4 wasn't a thing yet, but I think everyone's minds were set on that, so I'm thinking the guys behind the scenes probably wanted to give fans another temporary fix to satiate their appetites. Sure enough, if you picked up Gale of Darkness when it was new, you can get yourself a sneak peek of what was to come as a couple of Generation 4 Pokemon made their debut here. Sudowoodo's pre-evolution Bonsly and Snorlax's pre-evolution Munchlax. That was interesting to find out. It was like when I saw Meryl and Snubble in the first Pokemon movie before Generation 2 was officially released here in America. Pokemon Coliseum yearned to be more than just the GameCube's take on the stadium games, and while I appreciated the game's attempt of deviating from the standard formula in terms of structure and story, it sadly didn't make up for what it removed and ended up being far too repetitive and limiting, leading to an exhausting RPG 
RPG that had little substance and required too much grinding to just finish the main campaign. A few of you mentioned that Gale of Darkness was the better of the two, so immediately I was eager to see how so, but if anything was improved, it certainly wasn't the battle mode. Good god, it's such an afterthought here. As before, you and your friends need Game Boy Advances to even participate in multiplayer battles, and single player is merely just you versus a random AI opponent with a small selection of random Pokemon, and that's all there is to it. Shout out to the curtain here though, I relate to that face hard. And hey, at least Gale of Darkness lets you use multiple GameCube controllers for rental battles like in the stadium games, but you likely won't be spending more than five minutes on it with how you have no control over what Pokemon you get, and again, the selection is very limited. The user interface is also a huge clutter of text which isn't very appealing to the eyes. So it looks like all the attention was placed in the game story mode this time, which is fine. It's not like anybody was actually talking about Pokemon Coliseum's battle mode. And I'll give props, they really know how to sell the, the corruption themes. Before I even had a chance to start the game, Gale of Darkness corrupted my memory card, and I had to give him my own version of purification treatment. Gale of Darkness is set five years after the events of Coliseum, and once again our setting is in the Ore region. It turns out the Cypher organization is still alive and kicking, and their plans to use Shadow Pokemon for world domination is as strong as ever. They've managed to corrupt a Lugia and use its power to hijack a large cruiser full of Pokemon to expand their personal army. It's sort of implied that people die as a result of this, but the game doesn't really do anything with that. It's not treated as a big deal at all. It's weird. Gale of Darkness feels like it wants to be darker in tone, but at the same time not, and it's kind of frustrating. There's a point where you travel back to a town from Colosseum and Cypher planned on locking away all the townspeople and replace them with Cypher duplicates so they wouldn't arouse suspicion. Imagine if someone kidnapped you and the kidnapper sent a lookalike so that no one would be the wiser. That is pretty damn creepy on paper, but then it's quickly dealt with once you beat some masses in Pokemon battles. For as much as the game wants to push Cypher as a serious threat, it's still up to a young child to save the day, which I feel undermines the whole thing. Speaking of the hero, our protagonist this time is this young child named Michael. Michael spends his days living inside a Pokemon research facility with his younger sister Jovi, who likes to speak in the third person for some reason, and his family of Pokemon researchers. The team is looking to invent a way to purify Shadow Pokemon from their corrupted nature without using the Relic Forest, since the Ori region still has a bit of a Shadow Pokemon problem looming about. Cypher soon kidnaps one of the lead professors to aid their cause, and Michael, the child, mind you, is tasked with rescuing him and putting a stop to Cypher. Look, if folks know that Cypher is corrupting Pokemon to make them dangerous, kidnapping people and hijacking ships, Call the fucking police, or the military even. Why is everyone completely okay with just letting a child handle this? At least in the generation games, you know, stopping the bad guys like Team Rocket and such was never the point. It was just something you happened to do while on your quest to become a Pokemon master. Still far-fetched to a degree, but not as ridiculous given the circumstances. If a lone child has to be the one to save the day, then at least give me reason to believe so. Have the police or military in Cypher's pockets or some other thing. Something other than, I wish you the best on your journey because... The kid isn't collecting badges or trying to become the very best, he's trying to stop a terrorist organization. I know that's probably asking for too much in a Pokemon story, but seeing as Gale of Darkness is clearly going for something different than the standard Pokemon formula, I feel that's something that needs to be considered. But I guess Gale of Darkness isn't trying to be that different when I think about it. Things are definitely not as edgy as Colosseum. Uh, where to start? Uh, Wes's design was damn near the personification of Edge, from his choice of clothing, the vibe he gave off, at least in the intro, and need I say, that ridiculous motorbike. Michael, on the other hand, is more in line with a regular Pokemon protagonist, just as much as a mute as all the others and sporting a depressing standard scooter to get around the region. It's a big downgrade visually speaking, but he rocks the snagum device on his arm pretty well so he's got that at least, and I dig the scouter he gets to help him discover shadow Pokemon. That's a neat, efficient way of doing things instead of wasting a whole character to do that job. The Ore region entirely is considerably lighter in tone. There's less emphasis on hoodlums and gang members, Pyrite Town no longer has the under for one thing, and a majority of folks who battle outside of Cypher goons are just your standard Pokemon trainers. As far as how the story is told in Gale of Darkness, much like Colosseum, it's just you traveling town to town and putting a stop to Cypher's plans, battling hordes of Cypher goons in their spiffy Sentai gear. I feel I have to say this now, I would not recommend playing Gale of Darkness immediately after playing Colosseum. This game reuses a lot from Colosseum, which I suppose isn't terribly surprising given that this game came out just two years after Colosseum, but damn it shows at points. There are new areas, sure, and they are the best part of the game, and the region as a whole has seen some nice improvements. The townspeople are more interesting in conversation, some have some legit character moments and have clear-cut personalities and motivations. Nothing too complicated, but appreciate it nonetheless. There's more to do to fill up game time besides battles, you know, if you like uh, battle simulations and battle bingo. And there's actual thought put into the dungeon design, although not that much thought. Compared to other RPGs, this game's idea of puzzle solving is just pushing blocks into the right spots to open pathways and moving along. That's about it. For more than half of your adventure, however, you're revisiting areas from Colosseum, and they have not changed much, if at all, in the last five years. 
Uh, Gate Town isn't as bright and they changed the viewing angle, so that's different enough. But overall, because the two games are so similar and because Coliseum lacked in substance, I think it'd be perfectly okay with just starting with Gale of Darkness since it has almost everything Coliseum has and then some, except the motorbike. I can't let that go. This is, you're gonna give him like a big wheel with like three flaming mufflers attached to the sides or some other thing. Wild Pokemon are now a thing in the Oreo region. It's a limited selection, but these are your run of the mill Pokemon, so you don't have to worry about purifying them. They're good right out of the ball. You grab some Poke Snacks, leave them out for the Pokemon to munch on, leave the area, wait for your radar to go off to let you know that a Pokemon is there, and hope the guy does not munch lacks because if he shows up, it's a waste of time. And then you're ready for a good old fashioned Pokemon catch. Love the music too, it's one of my favorite tracks in the game. The type depends on which Poke Spot you find it in, but the Pokemon itself is random, so I hope it's something you can use if that's what you want. But they do have a secondary purpose, which I'll cover in a second. Double battles are once again front and center. Everything about them in Coliseum is about the same here, though I did notice that some animations were sped up, so it is a little better now. Adding shadow Pokemon to your ranks is also back as a main mechanic, and this was just improved all across the board. Shadow Pokemon now have more shadow moves to use than just Shadow Rush, and that itself doesn't hurt them anymore, so no more accidental fainting if you're trying to catch one. Hyper Mode is now called Reverse Mode. It doesn't eat up a whole turn like before, but now you suffer damage for every turn you stay in it, so if you're done taking advantage of its perks, it's best to snap the Pokemon out of it as soon as you can. Purification was made much easier for this game, though you can still purify the old fashioned way by having Shadow Pokemon engage in activity, which itself is faster, given the improvements to draining the meter, you can now also send Shadow Pokemon to this Purify Chamber. By utilizing regular Pokemon, whether they be ones you already purified or the random ones you caught in those Poke Spots, you can make these sets where you play Shadow Pokemon in this, uh, I don't know, Echo Chamber, surrounded by regular Pokemon, and this can speed up purification significantly. You have to finagle with it to get the best flow and tempo, basically the higher those attributes, the faster the purification. But this now means you don't have to keep using Shadow Pokemon in battles to get them back to normal, although again, that's still an option, and that itself was made easier. But I'm off with the streamlining anyway, and this was a good way to speed things up. I got a Shadow Pokemon I would like to eventually add to my ranks, but I don't want to divert attention from someone I'm currently focusing on, so this is good for multitasking. There's a lot more Shadow Pokemon to go about as well, meaning more variety, meaning more options for your team. I came prepared this time. I did not want to be caught off guard like in Coliseum, so I made sure to get my preferred types as early as possible. Steel types were not going to be my iron wall this time, so I got a Hound Doom and it made things much more comfortable. You start off with an Eevee that you can evolve into your evolution of choice when the time is right, so I got my Vaporeon, and the rest of my team soon settled in place. Honoring my friend Matt's request, I named my Hound Doom and then I, just for shits and giggles. And then I used Flamethrower, and then I gained experience, and then I fainted. <laughs> I also took the time to grind in optional Coliseum battles to gain experience points between plot development because I didn't want to deal with the sudden difficulty spike like I repeatedly did in Coliseum. However, this ended up being overkill. The difficulty curve in Gale of Darkness is lower overall, the Generation 2 to Coliseum's Generation 1. With those grinding sessions on top of fighting every trainer along my path, and believe me, especially in Cypher areas, there's a lot, I was constantly 4 to 5 levels above the opposition. With a diverse team ready to go early on, and having an Ursa Ring on my team, seriously, it's a bear, what do you expect? Gale of Darkness was rather easy, even if all the double battles meant you couldn't use all your usual strategies from the mainline games. And I'm glad the game decided to ease up from before. I don't have a problem with a Pokemon game being on the difficult side, but Colosseum just smacked you in the face as you were playing the game normally. That said, sadly, Gale of Darkness doesn't do much more than Colosseum. Again, this game mostly consists of you heading into the next area and fighting the ass load of trainers inside with little to no story told as you're traveling in those areas. And with the game reusing areas directly from Colosseum, you can imagine how mind-numbing this got. Though I find the Ore region to be improved from before, at least in terms of the characters you meet, it all feels the same. But for a moment, a moment, I thought this game was trying to be something much more. When you fight this mad scientist inside this large Robo Groudon, I thought, oh man, are, are we getting traditional boss battles this time? Oh, that'd be cool, fighting something other than Pokemon? Uh, using your team to fight in unorthodox ways and find different strategies, like, like a traditional RPG battle? But no, the scientist just uses Pokemon while inside the large contraption, so what the hell's the point of the robot? This disappointed me so hard. I thought Gale of Darkness was really gonna have something to set it apart, but it blue balled me. It ultra blue balled me. The story is passable yet predictable. I guess the main villain the moment I caught eyes on them and I was hoping that because it was so blatant that the game would bamboozle me at the end, but no, things go about how you would expect. And for as much as they hype up Shadow Lugia, you only see the son of a bitch twice. Once in the intro and then as an encounter at the end where you can just throw a master ball at it and call it a day. Prepare to meet your doom. Go forth my Shadow Lugia. Yep. Fuck! There are no character arcs for anyone significant bearing one or two characters you meet early on and don't see again for hours on end. Perhaps I'm expecting too much. Even when the games attempt a darker storyline, they're still kids games in the eyes of the developers, so they don't go all the way with the concepts they introduce. 
There are little nuggets that I enjoy throughout, and I don't find the story bad, it's just too simple given the game's length. Gale of Darkness is a little longer than Colosseum to boot. Not by much, but it might wipe you out if you're yearning for an RPG with a more fulfilling storyline. Gale of Darkness makes much appreciated changes to the game mechanically, but it's still too repetitive for its own good, and lacks a good story to keep you going. It's better than Colosseum for sure, but not by much. But all right then, you folks have waited long enough. We're done with the side games for now. So next time we're heading into the Nintendo DS with generation four proper uh, Pokemon Platinum to be precise. And I have not visited this in about 10 years, I wanna say. I got my memories for sure, but uh, we'll head into those properly when we get that video started. Uh, next week I'm gonna have another round two ready for you guys. And then uh, when all things are said and done, we'll have the generation four up and ready to go. Uh, hopefully, uh, around the time too many games starts, but uh, you know, RPGs can be their own sort of beast as I've told you many times before, we'll just have to see what happens. Uh, but uh, as always, thank you all for watching, have yourselves a fantastic night, and take care. And once more, shout outs to manscaped.com for sponsoring today's video. Using the link in the description below, you can get 20% off your order along with free shipping and a free gift using the code SEMJ at manscaped.com. That said, if you're attending Wizard World Philadelphia next weekend at the time of this upload anyway, I will be attending an Extra Life panel on how to help raise money for a charity event, specifically for uh, game day. It's just going to be for a few hours, but if you're around the area, come by, say hello, show support, and uh, we'll, we'll look at funny things together. I don't know. Have a good night, everybody.